Hi, my name is Sayyid Mohammed Fahad Zahid, and I'm a data engineering intern at Royal Cyber. As data engineers, we often find ourselves immersed in the complexities of pandas and SQL queries. We navigate through these languages to pre-process our data, making it ready for machine learning or data analysis. It's a crucial step, but it comes with its challenges. The challenge extends beyond the data engineer's desk. Many stakeholders, while not fluent in programming, wish to analyze data on platforms like Tableau or Power BI. However, here's the catch. If that data isn't clean, the insights they desire remain elusive. This brings me to PromptQL, a groundbreaking solution designed to address these challenges. PromptQL is a low-code prompt-based system leveraging the power of LLMs specifically created to democratize the ETL process. PromptQL is a unique solution as it allows users to process any data set with simple natural language prompts. No need to remember the intricate pandas or SQL queries. What you need is just to prompt the agent and it handles the data processing for you. So now we will be discussing the customer journey or how we want our customers to interact with the PromptQL application and get the best results. As soon as you open the application, you will see a button to upload the data set. Upon clicking this button, you will be able to browse your device and select a CSV or an Excel file. Once you do that, you will be shown the head of the data set. This head of the data set will allow you to see all the characters or numerics in the data set so that you can pre-process the data accordingly. Once the data set is uploaded, the pandas agent gets activated and the prompt box appears. In the prompt box, you can enter your query and ask the PromptQL agent to generate and process the data for you. For example, you can enter a query such as replace uh, the invalid characters with the mean of the column. And once you do that, PromptQL will apply that on the data set and the updated output will be shown. You can repeat the process to completely pre-process and clean your data. And once you do that, it is ready for machine learning or data analysis. And you can download your data set with the download button provided to you at every output. That's about it with the customer journey. Now we will move to the demo part. Okay, so let's get started with the demo. So in the demo, you can see as soon as you open the application, you are greeted with a greeting stated as welcome to PromptQL, your great way, your gateway to revolutionizing the ETL process and embracing the era of low code data engineering. You can see here, these are some logos just to make it catchy. And as soon as you start, you can see a position, a placeholder where you can enter your OpenAI API key. For security purposes, we have entered it like a password so that no one can, uh, no one can steal the API key of your user. So the user feels secure. And once you do that, you can also click on the I button to check if you've made any mistakes. But as I can see, the API key is good to go. So let's upload the data set, the most important part. So as soon as we do that, let's click here and open the Tumor data set. And it instantly gets uploaded. Once you upload the data set, you can see a few things right away. You can see that there is this unnamed column, which is unnecessary. You can see this gender column, which could have been sex, and you can see some question marks here as well. So let's get started with the data engineering part. So you can see you know, the chat below option, and you can see there is a position to enter your query and the generate button available there as well. So let's get that done. Okay. So let's uh, enter a query to ask our prompt condition to check if they are to get the description of the data frame. Let's do that. So generate a pandas query to describe to this 
subscribe the PDF. And as soon as you do that, you can click and the spinner goes on and the Langchain gets a response back for you. And here you can see the description of the data set right away. Okay. And we can see the response history available here as well. As soon as you enter a query, it would be noted down so that you can use it later. And you have the download data set button here so that at any point you can download your data set. So let's uh, check if there are any null values in the data set. To check null values in the df. So let's check. As soon as you do that, you can see that there are no null values in any of our columns, class A, it's X. None of them have any null values and the query got noted down as well. So the query used was df dot is null dot sum. So let's go ahead and check if there are, so in which column does it contain question marks as we saw earlier. To check question mark values in the df. So let's see what the response gets. So now we can see that some columns such as sex, his logic, scan, XLR contains question marks. So let's replace them with zero so that later on we can replace them with the mean. Okay. Let's keep it this way. To replace question mark values with zero in the data. And as soon as we do that, you can see that all the values in the data frame that were zero have been replaced. You can see the his logic column. There are no zero values available anymore. So let's go ahead and check the data types. Query to check data types of the data frame. And as soon as we do that, we can see all the uh, data frame data types and we can see that all the columns or fields that contain the question marks are termed as objects. So we need to replace those and change them to in 64. So let's go ahead with that. Change types of sets is so logic degree. Difference skin and XLR to int sixty four. As soon as you do that, you can see all the all the data types have been updated. Okay, and let's check what the response was. So it shows DF, sex, S logic, all the columns, and we assigned uh, 
dot as type in 64. So now, now I'm thinking of replacing the values that we replaced earlier to zero with mean of the data of mean of the column query to replace zero values with mean of this logic check and as soon as we do that we can see that the 67 values that were zero are now been replaced with the mean of the column now as i saw earlier uh, that six column needs to be replaced with gender as it looks better and makes more sense and it's ready to rename column six as gender and save it back generating a response okay so the sex column has been changed by gender and now makes more sense one for male and two for female now i would like to drop the unnamed column as it seems unnecessary here zero let's check and finally we can see with line chain we have dropped the column and all the data has been updated and is in much better condition than it was before and now is ready for machine learning or data analysis and we can see below that all the queries that we've used till now have been noted down and we can use them to get the most out of our machine learning or data analysis report. We can download the data set now. Okay, so as we downloaded the data set, now let's check the data set that we just downloaded. There it is. Just uploaded the data set. So now we can see that all the, uh, the unnamed column has been dropped. The sex column has been renamed. This logic column, the zeros have been replaced with the mean. Question marks have been removed over all alone. So that's about it with the demo. So that's all from my side. Thank you for watching. If you have, if you want to learn more about generative AI and other cutting edge technologies, you can contact us at info at royalcyber.com. Thank you.